This is Charles, I'm one of the surgeons at South Falls. Today we're doing a pretty cool case, which is a little Maltese cross that has this mass in the flank that was discovered incidentally by the primary care vet. The mass is sitting right here. Um, and so they did an aspirate on it, came back a sarcoma. And we've done a CT scan, which um, showed that there was no evidence of secondary spread. It is going full thickness into the body wall. However, the skin is completely spared uh, by the tumor. And so we're going to be able to preserve that skin. It's going to make closure a lot easier. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications um, so you get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So I'll start my skin incision here. And the skin incision that we're doing is basically a flank fold flap, but we're just suturing it right back down in C2. And um, we may consider, we are considering putting in a polypropylene mesh uh, to rebuild the body wall defect. Just depends, like if I can get away without doing one, I will. We always prefer not to do a mesh if we can avoid it, but I also don't mind using a mesh if I have to. Probably a bit caudal for a latissimus dorsi flap. Uh, it is caudal for a latissimus dorsi flap, yeah. There might be another abdominal, like a external abdominal oblique flap or something like that. Yeah. We can do. Elevate that skin. And you see that the tumor is actually under the external abdominal oblique muscle. So that's why we're able to preserve the skin over line. So that's our, you know, our one fascial plane. That was just the deep circumflex iliac artery that I just cauterized. You can see some nice big blood vessels within the skin. So tumor is sitting there, and I want to get a couple of centimeters around the tumor in the abdominal wall. So this is a dog. So if this were a cat, it would very likely be a injection site sarcoma. In a dog, they can have injection site sarcomas, but they're much less frequent in dogs than they are in cats. So I would say this. Um, I would not categorize this as an injection site sarcoma. Although I guess it is a sarcoma in a site that can be injected, so. So this is external abdominal oblique. Cautering down, cauterizing down to right there. You should try back there for me, please. So if this were a cat, I'd be getting a five centimeter margin. Uh, do we have our gelpies? Yeah, 
Yes, please. This does go right down into the abdomen. So I can still palpate the tumor through that abdominal muscle. So this is internal abdominal oblique and I'm into the abdomen there. That's peritoneum there. Where are my metzies? So that's omentum sitting there. That's kidney. Vessels here. Do you use your metzies rather than your cautery because you want to control your depth and plane? Yeah, so Sarah's asking me if I'm using mets and bones at this point rather than cautery because I want to better control my depth and plane, which is exactly correct. Gelfies in here to just spread out my tissues a little bit more. So that's colon there, urinary bladder, kidney. We'll be getting into vena cava pretty soon. We're close to vena cava. I'm going to be getting into it. Getting into vena cava zone. Now I have to watch out for ureter. So the ureter is sitting right there. A good band name, Vena Cava Zone. <laughs> My band in vet school was called the Extensor Groove. <laughs> in the same kind of line. Yeah. My nickname was Cerebellum. <laughs> That's great. We had a friend named Perry that we used to call Neil. <laughs> For Perry Neil. two centimeters away from the ureter. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so you can see sarcomas affecting the abdominal organs. Usually we think of those as being more the retroperitoneal sarcomas, and those can encompass or surround the kidneys and I think this ligature is on its way out. Uh, it's still working for me, but we'll throw it after this surgery. Just to be really careful here that I'm not getting anything important. I will get a new ligature, please. Is this the new one? That's the new one, yeah. Thank you. Let's track that up. Get some epivacaine, please. All right, so that's our mass there. You see we've got a nice medial margin, uh, which is abdominal musculature. Nothing that looks concerning here. Let's look at the hole we've created. I haven't decided yet. I don't think I'll be able to close this easily without using a mesh. Pivocane in half, just give us a little bit more volume to work with. get omentum, I'll bring it over the defect just so, so that I don't have 
intestines rubbing up against mesh. Some 3 O PDS, please. It's not critical that you cover mesh with omentum, but if it's handy, I often do. in the event that it does get infected and you have to remove the mesh later, having momentum covering it makes it more likely that you're going to get a nice fibrous tissue layer deep to the mesh. So surgery is your adhesions. Yeah. And I think that when you use a mesh compared to just pulling the muscle across, I think they're more comfortable. Makes sense. Rather than yeah, having that musculature under so much tension. Yeah. Not reducing your yeah. shale space. Loss of domain. Yes. We talk about that. How often have you done a splenectomy to? Half dozen times. One of those things that everybody talks about but never actually. <laughs> I mean, rarely is loss of domain a really serious clinical issue. Mm. All right, so where's our mesh? There's a question, Carl. Would you need to remove the mesh in the future? Would you perform this via an abdominal approach? Uh, no, I'd go external. So the question is, if I had to remove the mesh in the future, would I go abdominally? Um, and I would go from the ex ex from the outside. Okay, so then we're going to use this to make a pattern on the mesh. So now we know how much we have to cut out. Do you want curly? Uh, no, PDS is fine. Can I get some three O PDS? Yeah. 
And some people fold the corner or the edges of the mesh, and I do not do that. Why would you fold them? So I just, I, I, just so that you don't have the sharp edges of the mesh rubbing up against stuff. Yeah. Okay, so. Like I don't want the edge, the sharp edge of the mesh inside the abdomen. So I was having a discussion with the um, interns this morning, one of whom is very social media savvy. And he was asking if I ever thought about making my titles for my videos like the really clickbaity titles like, I can't believe he cut the, and then dot, dot, dot. <laughs> so I'll have to look up what clickbaity titles would be for my videos and then decide if I... Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to give some extra? Okay. Give a fluid bolus as well. And this does not need a drain. You've got the Omentum, which is the best drain in the world. Once I put in a mesh in a dog's chest, on a dog's chest wall for a rib resection, and I'd forgotten to put in a, a chest drain, so I just laid a drain down on top of the mesh. Always do simple continuous on meshes, as opposed to simple interrupted. Yeah. Yeah. And you want it to just sit rather than be tensioned? Uh, yes, that's fine. Also, it can go either way depending on how it fits. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to trim some of this out though. Sutures obviously have to be close enough together that you're not going to get a hernia.
just lay that back down. Bob your uncle. Intradermal? Yep. So we'll just do an intradermal suture pattern around the outside here. That has really robust blood supply. So you shouldn't have any issue with necrosis. I couldn't figure out what that waffle pattern was, but it's the <laughs> it's ink. My ink on the outside. All right, so I'll just come over and make sure I haven't left any questions unanswered. And I think that's about it. So I'm going to let you watch Sarah for a couple of minutes. Um, and so as far as the plan is concerned, I'm going to come over and do one over here on the computer. As Sarah closes. I think this mouse may be dead. Have you been using the computer at all? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. I don't think the mouse is working on this computer. Um, I'll have to do it on another one. Um, anyway, the plan for this dog is going to be uh, methadone. It's not on a fence CRI, is it? It is on a fence, so we'll keep it on the fence CRI until that runs out. And if that's not long enough, we'll switch it over to methadone. We'll send it home on codeine. Um, we will uh, put it on meloxicam. It can be sedated with anything. We need to monitor the calcium and continue to supplement with that. And uh, probably every four hours. Yeah, and then monitor for clinical signs of hypocalcemia, which would be twitching and seizuring. Um, this dog has primary hypoparathyroidism, um, and so it has to be on calcium and vitamin D supplements. Um, so you might be better off coming around on the other side. Yeah, there. I was going to. Yeah. I'm so, slow. I'm, I'm switching out to down at the moment. Yeah. All right. So we'll go ahead and wrap that up. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Please uh, subscribe to our channel and. Uh, so the indication for not removing the skin on the mass was because on the CT scan there was a layer of muscle between the mass and the skin. So we were able to preserve the skin. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications and also consider uh, joining our YouTube membership. Uh, the benefit is that you get a lot of behind the scenes video and also you're supporting our uh, effort to provide the best uh, live video continuing education that's available on YouTube. Um, we haven't made ever, ever made any profit from the YouTube membership. Um, we just use it to pay for digital marketing and then to buy equipment. We're actually quite, quite a bit in the negative even with Vet Dojo and everything. So anyway, thanks a lot and we'll see you again soon.